In this video, we're going to learn how to use a button to control an LED light. To start with, this button is able to receive input. I have this currently. There are four prongs across for the width, and we'll notice that in terms of the height, there's only three total prongs with one space in the middle missing. So I have this spread out from B2 to E2, and we have B4 to E4. If I pick this up, you'll notice there's these little prongs on the back. Those prongs are stretching out across widthwise four different pins. I am using it on row uh, column B and column E in row two and row four. So notice that the width should be stretching this way. We're going to start with a cord that has a prong on one side and no prong on the other. We're going to take the no prong side and we're going to plug it into general purpose pin number two which is one down from the top. Then we're going to take the side with the prong and we're going to place it into row number four, column A, so that it's in the same row as the channels of the button. Then we're going to take our cord that has a prong on one side and no prong on the other side, and we're going to connect it into the ground, which is the third one down on the right side. So we're going to place that in the third one down on the right side right there. And then we're going to plug this pin over in the top row of this negative channel right there. Next, we're going to take a cord with a prong on both sides. And we're going to place it in row two right next to where the button is. Then we're going to take the other side and we're going to place it anywhere else in this negative channel. It could be here. It could be here. It could be here. All of these are connected. So I'm just going to place it at the bottom of this channel right there. And I have now set up my button. Now it's time to write a short program to make it work. And we're going to do that on the Raspberry Pi. You're going to go to the Raspberry Pi icon. Make sure that you are in PC2. So click the switch if you need. And you're going to go to programming and Thani. In Thani, create a new program. And we're going to write the following. From GPIO0, import button, make sure the letter B in button is capitalized. Essentially, this is a library of things the button can do, and it's code someone else wrote that we're going to be using. We are then going to nickname the button, so we're going to say button space equals space capital B button 2. It's important that that B is capitalized here, but lowercase here. And we are using port number 2 on our Raspberry Pi GPO map. So we're mapping the number two into the port right here. We're gonna type lowercase b, this is now what we've named it, button dot wait underscore. The underscore on the keyboard is holding shift and hitting this key right here. So button dot wait underscore for press, empty parentheses. Then we're gonna type print parentheses, and then we have the apostrophe which is the key right next to the enter. And then in that, we're going to write U space push space me, and then apostrophe, and then end parentheses. So if we run this program now, what we'll see is it'll wait for something to happen. And then if I push this button, it's going to read down there, you pushed me. But it's only going to work one time. It will not run again until I click run a second time. And then if I click it, it will say you pushed me every single time I run the program and I click it once per time. Now let's upgrade it. Before you do, make sure you save your program and call this maybe button and then your name. So maybe button David. All files need to end with dot pi, dot pi, and then create a new program. We're gonna copy all of this create a new program and paste this in to a program. To paste it, you're gonna hold down on the mouse, hold, and this will let us select it all, right click, which is a click on this side of the mouse, and then copy, and then you go new, and then you can right click and click paste to paste this into a new program. So here we're gonna modify the program so that we're able to have the light turn on. On this new program, button and light.py. And let's go build it. We're going to rebuild our circuit for an LED just like we did before. I'm going to use my first wire and I'm going to use pin number 26, which is very close to this ground pin. So I'm going to use these two to make my circuit. Cord on pin number 26. And I'm going to bring the power over to row, let's say, 30A. Then I'm going to take my resistor and I'm going to place my resistor 
over here. Send to the resistor in 30B, and then I'm gonna place this over to the other side, maybe in G over here, whatever it's able to go into. Then I'm gonna take my LED, the positive leg of the LED is gonna be in row 30, which is the longer side, and then I'm gonna just see wherever the shorter side falls, it doesn't really matter, I guess I have it in 28. And then I'm going to finish the circuit by taking this prong, put it into row 28, and I'm gonna bring that back over to the ground, which is right below 26, which is the port at the very bottom right next to each other. It's built, now we just have to go to our program to tell it where these are. My current program, I'm gonna to go to line one, add a comma after the word button, and put a space and type LED, because I wanna import not just the button, but also the LED that we've used before. Enter to add a line, and now I put from time import sleep, just like we did before, so we can use the sleep library. LED's black cord is in general purpose pin number 26, so I will write the LED, is equal to LED26, because that is the pin that it's in. Now, currently, if I run this program, it'll still say, you pushed me. So I'm gonna now change what should happen after the button is pressed. Replace that with LED.on, sleep three seconds, and LED off. So now when I run this program, it's gonna wait for the button to be pressed. So I'm gonna run it, and nothing's gonna happen. Then I'm going to press the button, and then the light will turn on for three seconds and then turn off. It will not run again, but I can rerun the program and it will happen again. I wanted the light to turn on five times on, off, on, off. I can use what's called a for loop. It's for I in range, parentheses, the number of times you want to repeat, and parentheses, and then colon, which is this key right here, holding shift and tapping this key. Then, whatever you want to repeat, you need to highlight. So I'm going to highlight lines 13, 12, 11, and 10. And I'm going to hit tab on the keyboard, which will give it a space to show that these commands are inside this repeat. So all of those will repeat five times. So if I run this program now, I am going to click the button. And then the light will turn on and off five times. I changed the sleep to only 0.1 seconds and I ran that. The same thing will happen five times, but much faster. Keep in mind, this sleep command is what's allowing the LED on to stay on. If I was missing a sleep command, for example, after LED off, how might that change things? Well, let's run it and find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And if I click it, it looks like it only stayed on for five milliseconds. In fact, if I change it to sleep one and I run that, it'll just look like it stays on for five seconds. It's not gonna be turning on and off repeatedly. And the reason is because immediately after turning off, it just switches back on. There's no time between the off and the on. So that's why we need to have a sleep, the wait command after we turn it on and after we turn it off. I wanted this light to blink forever, not just five times. Well, four is a way to repeat four a certain number of times. But if I wanted it to stay on, I could change it to a while loop. And I could type over here, while capital T, true. And then I'm going to do a colon, which is shift colon. So while true. Then I'm going to fix the formatting. And I'm going to run this. So button, wait for press. While true, do all these things. So as soon as that condition has been met and this button is pressed, it is going to blink on and off forever. Forever. Also make the same thing happen with the command LED.toggle and then sleep 0.5. So this over here is toggling every 0.5 seconds and doing this forever while true. I wonder if there's a way that the LED can turn on or off based off of whether I'm holding down on it or not. So that's what we're going to take a look into. We're going to temporarily make it so that this does not run, but I want to keep it in my code. So I'm going to hit the apostrophe key three times, one, two, three, and it's going to make everything green. And I'm going to do one, two, three, three more to close it out. 
This will make it so that when I run my program, none of that code is read. You can still see it as the human, but the computer is ignoring it. So if I were to run that program, nothing is in fact going to happen. So we're going to change the command after button wait for press to something that's going to wait for the release. So we're going to change that up. I'm going to modify our code one last time and write from signal import pause because we're going to use the pause feature. Then we're going to change the code down below, button when pressed, keep that underscore in mind, equals led.on, no parentheses needed, button when released, led.off, and then we're going to have the pause command with a set of parentheses after this. So if we run this program, let's see what happens. When we push the button, the light is on. When we let go, it is turned off. So whenever I push it, it is now responding to our input directly. There you have it. You've now built your very own light switch.